G'day. I just lost half a tank full of CO2 gas in my uh, kegerator. It's only the second time in all these years. First time was a split hose. Uh, this time, I'm not exactly sure yet. I'm going to have a look. But uh, I use these old fittings, these blue and white fittings. I'll show you in a second. And I know if you have the door pressed on them, sometimes they can leak. Uh, but you know, I've been using them for a long time quite successfully, uh, but I just think it's time to upgrade. I'll give you a quick look at these and we'll see if, if I can wiggle them and show you how they leak. So they're the connections I'm talking about. And they've served me well for years. But they're touchy. So I put them in water and you just sort of bend them a bit. If your door of your fridge hits it or something when you shut it, you can be in a position where you'll lose gas. Like I've been very careful over the years and these have been fine for years, but uh, it's time to change them. So I got one of these. I was going to get a three tap one, but they were sold out. So I got a four tap one. Uh, I'm thinking of maybe putting a quick disconnect on one of them. Although these valves have a safety, a one-way valve in them. So if I take it out, then I'll have to put on another one-way valve. Anyway, that doesn't matter. I'll decide when we get there. I mean, I can always change it later. I might just leave this on for now. Now, many put them on the inside of their fridge or the back of their fridge. Uh, I'm thinking of just putting mine on the side of the fridge for now. I can always move it. I don't want to screw it in. I'm going to try and... Use some sticky Velcro stuff and Velcro it onto the side. It should hold it. Um, I don't want them sticking out like that. So I'm going to hopefully be able to get that to rest up neat on the side. But we'll soon find out when we get there. I'm going to use duo type fittings uh, on the input and on the, three of the outputs, all of the outputs for now. But as I said, I might change that fourth one later. And so setup should be pretty quick and easy. So while we're at it, I thought I'd put on my guard, which I've had sitting around for a while, for my regulator. And I'm also going to put on one of these duo tight fittings. If you don't know how to put these on, you put them on as hand tight and then 180 degrees, so half a turn. So if I start, a bit hard to see isn't it? So if I start up the top like that, and just a touch more. Probably didn't see that properly. I'll show you another one better later. And that should do it. There's the guard. Hopefully I can get this fitting through without too much dramas. There we go. So it sits in there like that. And of course, there's screws to put in the back. Screw it in place. There we go. If the bottle falls over, at least the gauges aren't going to break. That is solid as, as you can see. You might want to just make sure that connection's done up properly before you put the guard on, because it looks like it'd be a little hard to get in there to tighten it up. Now, of course, I'm just going to do the same thing with these. Screw them on hand tight. Probably don't need the fourth one on right now, but anyway. 
and then the same thing. Just 180 degrees should do it. So if I start from there, go around to there, that's about right. Don't over tighten them. Of course they are. They're not steel and you could split them if you over tighten them. There we go. Now because I'm using duo type, I am swapping over all my gas line to the EVA barrier line. Because okay, it works a lot better with these connections than the old, the old really stiff line. Uh, I wouldn't use the old stiff line with these if you can avoid it. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got stainless gas ones to replace my other ones. So I'm going with the plastic ones for now. But they'll be fine. So, and it's just the same thing again, of course. Up to hand tight. There we go, that's virtually it. And when you're cutting these EVA lines for your duo tights, you want to make sure it's a nice right angle cut. You can just use a Stanley knife or something, but these are handy. They're only cheap, a couple of bucks. Uh, just make sure you get a nice clean cut. It's very important. Now I've run into a bit of a problem. I can't fit the three lines through the hole in the back of my fridge. Um, I'm sure I can make a work around, but I'm in a bit of a rush today, so I'm going to leave that for another day. Now. Your fridge may be different. I'm using a Mark IV at the moment. It was a prototype model. Uh, so there's things slightly different to the ones that were actually released. Um, I know in my uh, older fridge, the Mark III, I think it is, uh, that had a much bigger hole for the gas lines. So for now, I'm just gonna put one gas line through and I'm gonna leave the taps inside. I don't think I'm gonna attach them anywhere. There's not much room in there, uh, but we'll see how we go once I get it in there. Just in case you haven't used these duo type fittings before, as I said, you want a nice clean cut. And then you push it right in and it'll go a fair way. Um, if you, some people just push it in a little bit, but you, get a, but you get a good grip and it'll probably go in nearly, you feel it go once and then it goes again. I'll show you again. So actually if I take it out, if I try and leave my thumb where it is, you need to push in. It actually goes in about an inch. So if you're not pushing it in an inch, you're not pushing it in enough. It's like a double click. It sort of goes once and then twice. And then you can sort of pull it out, back out a little bit like that. That should be nice and tight. Yeah. And if you want to take them out, you need to push that little end bit in and then you can pull it out again. It's just so quick and easy. I won't video it all, of course, but Bang, there you go. Bang, there you go. No stuffing around with barbs and clamps. I'm just going to have to be very careful of this end one at the moment. You can buy plugs. I haven't got one for this. And just out of interest, mine was leaking. I hadn't done it up. I'm going to see if I can tighten it up a bit with the guard on. Oh, I don't think so. Just a note, I couldn't tighten that up with the guard on, and mine I hadn't tightened it up enough, so check it before you put your guard on. Now we're not leaking, I can put the guard on. If you've taken these lines out and put them back a couple of times, it can get a bit rough, so just snip the end off and put a nice clean line back in. So I've turned the taps on, no leaks there, no leaks there, check the disconnects. You don't have to use the water method, I'm just doing this for speed to show you guys for the video. What you can do is do this, put 30 psi in the lines, and then just turn the gas off at the bottle and leave it. Um, you might have to leave it a few hours overnight even if you can. Um, and the pressure might go down a little bit with the temperature change, but if it actually you know goes down to zero, 
then you've got a leak somewhere. It's also worth mentioning if you're doing the pressure test um, and you've got these hooked up to the kegs, the beer can absorb the gas and so you'll lose pressure that way too. So you're better off sort of leaving them disconnected but you must make sure that you're not getting a leak through the bottom of your poppet there. Now what I mean by not seated properly is the little plunger in the bottom sometimes. Sometimes it can just seat a little bit crooked and usually if you stick your finger in and reseat it, it fixes things up. Also don't do this, that's what being in a rush is. <laughs> I've got the pressure of relief valve thing stuck behind the guard. Don't do that. And just in case you do, all I had to do was loosen the screws off. I didn't have to take it right off to get it out again. <laughs> so that's it. It's good to have my amber ale back on tap. This was actually only from, uh, put in the fermenter last Tuesday. And today is Thursday. So, you know, 10 days. Two of those were coal crashing. <laughs> how, much, how many days did I say then? <laughs> Nine days. Two of those were coal crashing. I'm confused. Anyway, then that was the easiest setup um, that I've ever done. Be it gas side or beer side. I haven't done the beer side yet. That's for another day. Probably should have done it all at once, but uh, I needed the beer for this weekend and I haven't got the time. I needed the gas on. <laughs> so hopefully I won't lose a bottle overnight and we'll all be good. So I'll leave a link down below if you want to check out the duo type fittings or the, or the um, guard for the um, regulator or the little snipper things. <laughs> um, I really want to get them on the outside. Uh, I'll have a little think. Maybe drill a hole or something. I'm assuming I can probably drill a hole right next to that hole. Shouldn't assume when you're drilling into fridges or even through the side. Anyway, don't listen to that. Cheers.